I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> hey guys, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the open secret in the gay community. A lot of guys go to bathhouses and for some reason, we don't really like talking about it. And I think the reason for that is, is there's a lot of stigma and there's a lot of misconceptions that surround them. And I created this channel because I really wanted to take a very non-judgmental, very introspective approach into bathhouses and bathhouse culture. So what qualifies me? Well, I worked at the premier bathhouse in a major city for about five years. And honestly, I've been going to them for about as long. I mean, and you wouldn't really believe the stuff that I've seen. I mean, some of those misconceptions definitely are rooted in something. But they're just that. They're misconceptions. And I really want to clarify them. So the purpose of this video is to just get the basic questions out of the way. Usually when I talk about bathhouses, you know, someone is going to ask me, what is a bathhouse? I want to be able to refer this video to people who might really not know what bathhouses are about. So before we talk about anything, I need to have a conversation with you guys. I'm not a sexual health expert and I would never really claim to be. I don't really feel comfortable talking to any of you in any degree about this really sensitive subject. We're going to be talking about bathhouse culture. We're going to be talking about hookup culture. We're going to be talking about anonymous sex. And if you have any questions about what PrEP is, what STIs are, uh, how they're transmitted, anything like that, go ahead and look through the resources that I provided in the description and they're going to do a much better job about educating you on this subject than I ever could. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. So bathhouses sometimes refer to as like spas or saunas, sometimes yeah, like even just sex clubs. They're going to be places where you can pay money to go hook up with other guys. Now it's really important for me to clarify that this isn't a brothel. So you can't really go in there to uh, hook up with employees or people that are paid to be there. You're really only hooking up with guys who have paid to come in. And that's actually one of the worst things about working in these kinds of places. It's like being a diabetic in the candy store. You can only like look, you can't touch. We would get in a lot of trouble for that. Bathhouses operate like uh, private clubs. Typically, you have to buy membership in order to come in. Inside, you're going to find your standard spa stuff. Wet saunas, dry saunas, pools, jacuzzis, uh, lounge areas, gyms. But since the primary purpose of these places is to hook up, you're also going to find stuff like uh, glory holes, dark rooms, video rooms, uh, communal play areas. So depending on the club, it's going to change. But typically, you rent either a room or a locker. So the rooms are pretty bare. It's, it's nothing like fancy. You're not staying at a hotel or anything. Usually you're gonna find like a bed and at most like a TV and a mirror. I think I've been to one bathhouse where like there were private bathrooms for each individual room, but that was really rare. If you decide to get a locker instead, you don't get a room. So if you find someone in there that you, you know, wanna get to know, you're either gonna have to be invited into their room, you're gonna have to find a quiet little corner, or you're gonna have to be okay with giving an audience a show. Some of these places don't have rooms or lockers. You're gonna find booths and uh, glory holes and dark rooms, and there's really not gonna be an option to rent a room or a locker. So what you're paying for is uh, time to use the venue. So there's really no such thing as a free entry. And honestly, look, let's talk about that. So why would you choose to go into a bathhouse if my grinder is free? Like when you think about it, um, people go to bars even though they can drink at home for free. You know, you go to these spaces for like the ambiance or the atmosphere to meet friends, whatever. And I used to ask my customers this all the time, like, why did you decide to come into the bathhouse? And people had different reasons. Like they had really good reasons. Like for example, they would tell me like people like wasting too much time on apps, which is, you know, it's true. Either they couldn't host because they were living with friends or family. Sometimes they were in committed relationships or they were closeted. And like you wouldn't really believe the amount of guys that would come in like in groups. Like now that I think about it, there was a study and this was actually one of the questions. Like, why do you choose to come into bathhouses? I think the key takeaway here is really guys go to hookup. 
So bathhouses actually do a lot to ensure the safety of their guests. So that the way that that looks is like they're either going to work with outreach programs that uh, provide free testing, sexual health resources and education. And sometimes these are privately funded or like they're funded by the city. On top of that, they provide free condoms, as many as you want, and you know, even to take home. And they really encourage you to use them. Mm. I'm gonna go out on a limb. If you have any doubts about STIs or you have any reservations about them, like for example, like if you can't name common STIs, if you don't know how they're transmitted, you don't know how they're treated, more importantly, where in your area you can go to treat them, consider not engaging in bathhouse culture. And don't take this to mean that bathhouses are like riddled with STIs and they're totally unsafe. It's just, you need to be properly educated on STIs, regardless of whether or not you're going to bathhouses. Okay, so that was a lot of words and I didn't even answer the question. I'm not avoiding it, I promise. It's just, it's kind of complicated. Are they safe? Uh, no sex is safe. And you really run the risk of contracting some kind of STI realistically anywhere if you're engaging in anonymous sex and you're engaging in bathhouse culture. However, if you feel like you're informed about, you know, your health and you're taking measures to protect yourself and the safety of your partners, like uh, being on PrEP or using condoms, then I feel you're ready to go. Listen, if you're still not satisfied with that answer, you know, try this. Between 2004 and 2010, 1,155 men who have sex with men were screened for HIV and or STDs at a Providence, Rhode Island bathhouse. The prevalence of HIV was 2.3%, syphilis 2.0, urethral gonorrhea 0.1, urethral chlamydia 1.3, and 2.2% of the men had hepatitis E antibodies. I think that same study found that around 43% of guys had engaged in like unprotected sex in the prior two months. Now, I really need you to keep in mind that these statistics are pre-PrEP and how PrEP is actively, you know, lowering the transmission rate of HIV versus how it's possibly raising the transmission rates of other STIs. All of that is still largely being studied. So when you visit bathhouses, they're going to have you sign these documents and these outline more or less the same risks that we're going through now. But the only reason that I'm mentioning them is because these scare newcomers like a lot. They can sound really scary. I get customers asking me all the time, um, why do I need to sign these? Um, this doesn't sound safe. And these consent forms and liability forms exist for you to understand the risk, but as well as to pass on the liability onto you, the guest. After all, no one is forcing you to come into these spaces. You're making that decision for yourself. Um, uh, yes, but no, I mean, there's going to be really clean ones and there's going to be really dirty ones. And if you're the kind of person that gets grossed out really easily, I think you're going to find even like the clean ones are dirty, <laughs> like on a cleanliness scale of like a contemporary art gallery to like rest stop bathroom, I would say there's somewhere around like a middle school locker room it is, it's gonna smell like hormones and bad body spray <laughs> and you're also gonna step on like some really questionable fluids so like <laughs> bring some sandals um i think a lot of people find this part boring but i don't know why i just i find it so interesting bathhouses operate in like a legal gray area it's a legal gray area but it's a gray area nonetheless and cities like are usually looking for an excuse to shut these kinds of places down so bathhouses really have to be on it they're constantly hounded by like a lot and i mean like a lot of government regulations i don't know that i could spend too much time or like be too specific about this question because it's going to be a thing that really varies from place to place, city to city, sometimes even like different places within the same city. There's definitely some legit ones that are actual sex venues that were grandfathered in from a time where these kinds of places were totally legal. And then other times bathhouses have to get really creative in how they classify themselves. I've seen some bathhouses that are like spas uh, gyms, resorts, country clubs, fraternities, that one was weird. They're gonna typically be, like I said, places that require private membership. 
And depending on the zoning and the classification, the laws that govern them are really going to change. This affects how much time you can spend in a place, whether or not you can get publicly naked or whether a place is allowed to have like beds and doors. And then on top of that, you know, there's going to be the rules that the club sets for its guests. I, I actually had a customer who asked me one time if he was going to be arrested for going to a bathhouse. The answer to that is no, by the way, you're not going to get arrested for going. But there definitely was a point in bathhouse history where men were being targeted or harassed or arrested for going to these kinds of venues. Nowadays, the burden of legality rests on the venue and not so much on the guests. And then laws are really changing surrounding bathhouses. So cities are getting more and more okay with these kinds of places popping up. Unless you cause some kind of property damage to the place and the bathhouse is the one that calls the cops on you, like you're gonna be fine. Bathhouses require you to show your ID every single time you go into the venue. So they don't really use this to verify your age. These are private venues and they require you to be a registered member of the club. And what that means is when you come in for the first time, uh, they're gonna take your ID and they're gonna take some information down from it. They're not gonna do anything with it. They only use this for like protocol reasons. Either the city requires them to take this kind of information down because they're classified as a certain kind of venue. And also because they want to make sure that, you know, you haven't broken any of their rules in the past. One of the funniest questions that I used to get was guys would go in and I, you know, they saw me like take their information down and they were like, um, are you gonna send anything in the mail? And it's like, why on earth would I do that? <laughs> like, like, what would we send? What would it say? <laughs> Bathhouses are totally private. You really don't have to worry. I used to see all walks of life go in there. I would see like doctors, lawyers, professors, police officers, firemen, pastors, and yeah, like the occasional celebrity. Confidentiality is the name of the game. If it got out that we were outing or putting our customers on blast by like sending them stuff in the mail or running to a news outlet like X or Y celebrity was here, like no one would go, no one would trust us. And on top of that, I mean, it sounds harsh, but the cashier at the window, he doesn't care who you are. <laughs> like I promise you, I never cared who was at the other end of the window. They're completely private. Like you really don't have to worry. Well, I think they're fun, I don't know. <laughs> you know, before I made this video, I actually asked a lot of my friends who had never been to bathhouses, what questions do you have? What would you want me to answer? And this was on top of their list. I really don't know how to answer this question because it's gonna be something that, it's gonna be different from person to person. One of the things that I could probably say is that like things happen really fast sometimes. There's a lot of cruising. I don't want to say like it's impersonal though, because it really doesn't have to be. Like, you know, sometimes you're going to come around like a dimly lit corner and you're going to see this guy, you know, up in the air and you're just going to be like, more commonly, you're going to have the guy leaning up against the wall who's just like scoping the room out, keeping to himself. And both of these guys can exist within the same space of a bathhouse, like even on the same day. And it's really going to be up to you how you engage them. I can't teach you how to cruise. I'll probably have a separate video. No, actually, you know what? I, I'm the worst person at cruising. I would not know how to teach anyone that. I am the worst. And I guess like, I don't know. Uh, another thing that happens is guys know what they're looking for and they assume that you do too. That doesn't mean that there's not room to be nervous because you definitely can be. If, if you see a guy kind of just like prowling and cruising you and you just like approach him in a very friendly way, he's going to turn that off. He's going to he's gonna meet you at your level. And if you want to take it slow, if you're that kind of person that wants to talk to people, you can. Most men are, you know, they're going to accommodate you if you just talk to them. Like communication is important unless it isn't. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So I'm not going to sit here and mislead you. Sometimes it can get less than consensual. For example, you're going to have a guy that's going to get really grabby or, you know, he's not going to take no for an answer. And I mean, this is going to put a lot of you off, but like eventually you're going to get, you know, grabbed. And you know, how you handle that really is going to depend on you. Like no cashier in the country is going to get mad at you if you twist that man's arm off. 
it's never gonna get that way though like it never comes to that a physical altercation like that in the five years that i was working at a bathhouse super rare usually when you tell a guy no that you know that means no on that subject though you know you're gonna get rejected a lot i promise you like unless you're like walking around looking like this you know, it happens so often that guys really don't think twice about it. Usually the way that this looks is like, you're gonna have a guy making eye contact with you. And if you like look away and you're, you know, you're not, actually, I'm not gonna teach you how to cruise, okay? I said that I wouldn't. <laughs> Listen, just give the guy a tap on the shoulder or just like shake your head. And that's gonna be enough to for them to know that you're, you know, you're not interested. And you know, this is gonna be the only time that I draw like the comparison to bar culture. Cause like, that's that's really kind of how it is. In both of these spaces, in bars and in bathhouses, nobody's really required to do anything with anybody. You don't have to go and, you know, dance with anybody. It's it's super consensual. Sometimes it's, you're gonna have a, an asshole and kind of gets grabby, but it's not, that doesn't mean that it's gonna ruin your whole experience. Uh, I don't know. What can I say about this? Um, I mean, it was a job. Like, it's a job where I saw naked men all day, but like, it was still a job. I had responsibilities that I needed to do. And you know, they weren't always fun. Sometimes I had to like fold towels or like cut flyers, you know, that kind of, those kind of like menial tasks. Despite how much I just, I love the job. Like there were days where I just wanted to walk out and never see another naked man again in my life. You know, when it was good, it was great. And when it was bad, it was like, ah. I was, uh, I was the cashier. I was the guy that rang you up. I was the one that uh, registered you, like if it was your first time. If I ever checked you in and like you remember me, I. And then, you know, if you broke any of my rules, along with the manager, I would be the one that would grab you by the hair and kick you out of my club. So if I ever checked you in and then promptly kicked you out and you remember me, I, so like, I worked at a 24 hour place and I worked the graveyard shift. So I worked from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. for about three years. Guys definitely did come in at that time. It wasn't as busy as it was on other shifts, but I want to say on my busiest shifts, I would check in somewhere around 100 to 150 different guys. Um, I got to use the club for free. I don't think that I started using the club until maybe about a year after I started working there. And yeah, that kind of had to do with like my coworkers, I considered them family and that was just a little bit awkward. But also, I don't know that I had the confidence. I had a lot of insecurities and I kind of just, I don't know that I that space was for me. I don't think that I'm confident enough for YouTube, but you know, here I am pushing through it. <laughs> I think I heard about my bathhouse for the first time from a guy on Grindr. I think at the time I couldn't host and then he couldn't host. And so he was like, hey, why don't we go, you know, check out a bathhouse? And I was just really surprised that those places were still open. I thought they had all closed like in the 80s and 90s. And so, you know, I went online to look up more information about it. And I saw that they had a website. So I went, when I looked through it, I saw that they were hiring and I was like drunk as hell, by the way, you know, okay, I'll fill out an application. What's really funny is that I actually remember putting on my application that I don't know that I have it in myself to visit this space. Just give me an interview. Just give me an interview and that would be enough to like satisfy my soul and I'll be able to like peek behind the blinders and like see what happens in these kinds of spaces without actually like going into one. So anyway, my hiring manager actually told me that was actually the reason that I got called in. He never saw that on any application at all. And he just thought it was really funny and really curious. And he was like, you know, screw it. I'll give him the opportunity. I applied and like a week later, I had the job. Initially, you know, like I was only gonna stay for the summer. You know, it paid really well. It, the tips were incredible. I really got along with a lot of my customers and I had really good health insurance. I just ended up staying there for about five years. Like a lot of you, I lost my job during COVID. You know, they did what they had to do and I don't really resent them for it or anything. They paid my health insurance through a global pandemic and they did so for like as long as they reasonably could. And for that, like I am super grateful. And on that subject, you know, the events leading up to the pandemic, I want to say from like January all the way to like mid-March, from the perspective of working at a bathhouse, like it was just really wild. You had these guys that were deathly afraid of this virus, but they were like still punching in their weekly hours or whatever. I really wanted to do a video about that. That's a conversation. Anyway, thanks for watching. I really have to end this video right now because I turned my air conditioning off for this and like I am frying under these lights. 
I hope this demystified and destigmatized some of the misconceptions that you might have about bathhouses. And again, the purpose of this video was just to get those basic questions out of the way. But if you have anything specific you want to ask me, go ahead and leave it down in a comment. Like and subscribe. As soon as I get that video out, you know, you're going to be notified and you'll support the channel. I really love answering questions. Like, I don't know if you can tell how much fun I'm having making this video. Actually, I'm really wondering if you guys can tell I don't have pants on.